In this demonstration, I want to walk you through Google Chrome and how to inspect your work for any issues you might have in building HTML, CSS. I have my file, a more advanced grid that I built a few days ago, and I want to open this up in Google Chrome. Google Chrome is cross-platform, both for the Macintosh and the PC. If I control click my Macintosh, I want to go and open with Google Chrome. This might look familiar if you've watched the previous video on how to build the grid with the custom house involved. The really great part about Chrome is the inspect feature. I want to hold down my control key and click anywhere on the screen and pull down to where it says inspect. The inspect now will show you all of your HTML and the corresponding CSS below. I'm going to open up my browser a little bit wider just so I can see a lot more code on the right hand side. If you notice this top right arrow, it says select an element in the page to inspect it. I want to click on this arrow and I can move my mouse around and notice as I move my mouse the HTML moves. I want to go over to this bottom one right there and I'm going to click on it. What it shows is it says pick full call with 100% auto and block is the class that I applied to this picture. If I go up above to div class 50, note that it shows my CSS as call 50 50% and call dash, which is part of the call name, at float left. What it also does is it tells you what line number that your code is on. So for example, the call 50 that I wrote is in the global CSS file line 36. I can find that piece of code by going into my global file. I'm going to use Coda. If you've watched my demos, you've probably seen that before. And if I double check that number, because I didn't write it down, that was line 36 is with 50%. If I go to Coda, line 36 is call 50 and 50%. Now the great part about also this inspect piece is that if I write something silly, like if I say alphabet, and I know for sure that width is not going to work with that, Notice that this little yellow dot that says invalid property value. Obviously the 50% has to be there in that width, so I'm going to change it back to 50% and now it works. If I were to say float right, I can click just really on the word or the element and say right. Now of course it throws everything in a whack and it flips it the opposite direction because it goes to the right. I want to go left and now I have it back to where it is. What I can also do with this, I can turn things on and off. So for example, if I pull my container up and I turn off the margin by unchecking this, whoop, everything goes to the left because the margin has not been established as zero auto. I can also adjust the numbers by using my arrow keys. The down arrow moves down in numbers and the up arrow moves up in numbers. So margin I have as margin top 50. If I use the shift key and the up arrow or the down arrow, it shifts it by 10 points or pixels in this case. And it really allows you to have a lot of flexibility in the way you can test your projects out. For example, if I wanted to see how this looks with a purple background, which we all know how that's going to look with a purple background. I could say background color purple. And now I have a purple background that I've tested in Chrome. Now note this doesn't save your work. So whatever you do, make sure you apply this into your CSS file. If I hit Command R, it goes back, refreshes all of my code. But this is a simple way to test and inspect your work and also test other variants pieces of code to see if they work inside your project.